ജീവിതത്തിൽ എന്ന പോലെ രാഷ്ട്രീയത്തിലും സ്നേഹത്തിൻ്റെ പ്രാധാന്യം രാഹുൽ ഗാന്ധി വിശദീകരിക്കുന്നത് അമേരിക്കക്കാരെ പോലും അമ്പരിപ്പിച്ചിരിക്കുകയാണ് സ്നേഹവും കരുണയും എല്ലാ മേഖലയിലും ആവശ്യമുള്ള ഒന്നാണെന്ന് രാഹുൽ ഗാന്ധി വിശദീകരിക്കുമ്പോൾ അദ്ദേഹത്തെ ഇന്റർവ്യൂ ചെയ്യുന്ന ജോർജ് ടൗൺ യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റി പ്രൊഫസർക്ക് പോലും അത് ശരിയാണെന്ന് അംഗീകരിക്കേണ്ടി വന്നു രാഹുൽ പറഞ്ഞത് വിദ്വേഷത്തിന്റെ കമ്പോളത്തിൽ സ്നേഹത്തിന്റെ കട എന്ന ആശയം അദ്ദേഹം മുന്നോട്ട് വയ്ക്കുന്നതിനു മുൻപ് രാഷ്ട്രീയത്തിൽ ആരും താൻ നിങ്ങളെ സ്നേഹിക്കുന്നു എന്ന വാക്കുകൾ പറഞ്ഞിരുന്നില്ല എന്നാൽ ഇപ്പോൾ എവിടെ ചെന്നാലും ആളുകൾ വിശേഷം ചോദിക്കുന്നതിനോടൊപ്പം രാഹുൽ ഐ ലവ് യു എന്ന് പറയും എന്ന് രാഹുൽ ഗാന്ധി ഈ ഇന്റർവ്യൂവിൽ പറഞ്ഞപ്പോൾ അവിടെ ഓഡിയൻസിൽ ഇരുന്ന ഫോറിൻ പോളിസി വിദ്യാർത്ഥികൾ പോലും രാഹുൽ ഐ ലവ് യു എന്ന് വിളിച്ചു പറയുന്ന മനോഹരമായ സംഭവമാണ് നടന്നത് ചുരുക്കി പറഞ്ഞാൽ അമേരിക്കയിൽ പോലും സ്നേഹത്തിന്റെ കട തുറക്കാൻ രാഹുലിന്റെ ഈ ഇന്റർവ്യൂ കാരണമായിരിക്കുകയാണ് താൻ മോദിയെ വെറുക്കുന്നില്ല എന്നും മറിച്ച് പലപ്പോഴും അദ്ദേഹത്തോട് സഹതാപമാണ് തോന്നുന്നത് എന്നും പറഞ്ഞപ്പോൾ സദസ്സിൽ നിന്ന് ഉയർന്ന കയ്യടി ഒന്ന് കേൾക്കേണ്ടത് തന്നെയാണ് അമേരിക്കയിലും മറ്റ് വികസിത രാജ്യങ്ങളിലും വിദ്യാർത്ഥികൾ പഠിക്കുന്നത് ഇത്തരം സെമിനാറുകളിലൂടെയാണ് അവർ തങ്ങളുടെ യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റികളിലേക്ക് ലോകത്തെമ്പാടും നിന്നുമുള്ള വിദഗ്ധരെ ക്ഷണിച്ച് പ്രഭാഷണങ്ങളും ചർച്ചകളും നടത്തും സുഹൃത്തുക്കളെ ഈ ചാനൽ നിങ്ങൾ ഇഷ്ടപ്പെടുന്നു എങ്കിൽ ഇതുവരെ സബ്സ്ക്രൈബ് ചെയ്യാത്തവർ ചാനൽ സബ്സ്ക്രൈബ് ചെയ്യുകയും കഴിയുന്നതും വീഡിയോകൾ മുഴുവനായി കാണുകയും പരമാവധി ഷെയർ ചെയ്യുകയും ചെയ്യണമെന്ന് അഭ്യർത്ഥിക്കുന്നു I mean one of the great for friends of India and Indians in India um and overseas Indians one of the great worries about India in the last few years has been the health of Indian secularism the survivability of Indian secularism the belief I think that your family and and the independence movement in general embodied that India is strong because it's plural and diverse has now been at least partially to some extent greatly supplanted by the idea of a much more uniform Hindu majoritarian India. Now you've talked recently about the store of love and I think as a sort of rhetorical counterpoint to the implication that the BJP represents a store of hate. My my question to you is are you updating your idea of what secularism is to suit to suit the times we're in the challenge that you're facing because this is a very different it's, challenge. By the way, it's not a rhetorical idea. Okay. It's a practical idea. Mm-hmm. I I don't think there's anything rhetorical about it. I mm-hmm. I walked from Kanyakumari to Kashmir and halfway through that walk I started asking myself a question and I was in politics from 2004 and I started started asking myself why have I never used the word love as a politician and nobody uses it right we use anger we use hatred every day you can read it nobody uses love and then I was like well let me try it works it works much better than hatred and it works practically right so and <laughs> I can't stress to you how effective and how powerful it is so it's not a rhetorical thing a uh, love and affection are values that everybody accepts everybody feels you feel it for your family you feel it for your country you feel it for your friends so why is it not in the political lexicon right so i i think it's not a question of redefining secularism i think that there is a stream of politics in india represented by mahatma gandhi that starts with this question and that was what his life was about that we are not going to accept uh violence hatred anger as values um, i i you know i used to you're saying rhetorical uh i was in politics from 2004 to when the yatra started nobody 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 i used to meet them they used to say hello mr gandhi how are you very nice to meet you lovely to meet you nobody ever said i love you now mm-hmm. now i'm serious now i walk out i walk I'm serious I walk out to a restaurant and after the restaurant saying we love you. <laughs> no. Oh, I mean like I don't understand I don't understand I I don't understand why why is it like it's sort of some complex sorry that politicians have somehow they're not allowed to so, show affection for people or they're not uh, allowed to be affectionate they're not about to, allowed to be loving and i discovered that you know i did it in my yatra and it's changed my way of looking at my work completely so i think it's a very powerful thing so let me before i think of questions what i am asking a final one because i'm going to give you a, about 20 minutes worth of of questions i'm so sure you, there are I, a lot of i i want to just touch one yes. thing that you said you know the idea uh, of secularism yeah see india at its heart is a union of languages traditions histories religions everything and that's just the design of india when you have lunch here you get first course 
salad, first course, second course. We don't get any of that. We get a thali with everything placed inside it. <laughs> and nobody is sitting there saying, okay, what's the first course? What's the second course? No, they're like, it's a jumble. And all the food has the same value. Nobody says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take the dal. I'm going to separate it from the uh, rice. And, you know, I'm only going to eat the rice. I'm not going to eat the dal. <laughs> so this idea, this idea of mixing and merging, this is, uh, this is India. And in India, this is a very deep philosophical idea. When Indian people go to a temple or when Sikh people or people from any religion in India go to their religious places, what they're doing is merging with the deity. Right? They're, they're doing this. And that is the nature of India. You can't, you can't remove it. And the misunderstanding that the BJP and the RSS have is that they think that India is a whole bunch of separate things. It's not. So we don't need to redefine anything. It's already there. I can't help, and this will be my last question, I can't help branding this your the, the Rahul Gandhi Love Actually campaign. <laughs> this is... You got this is, way we want. This has got to... Um, but, but put it's that, a lot more fun. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm you know, feeling You go that. in politics, you go, and then you shout at that guy, and then that guy shouts, shouts back at you, then you abuse him, then he abuses you back. Mm. It's boring stuff. <laughs> it's tiring, you know? So... Um, between now and like you'll be surprised mm -hmm. I, I mean you will be surprised but I don't like I don't actually hate Mr. Modi mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I don't <laughs> like I get up in the morning and okay you know he's got a point of view fine I don't agree with his point of view but I don't hate him mm -hmm. and in fact I in many moments I empathize with him, right? So it's not that I think that he's my enemy and now I hate him and he's got to be, no. He's got a different point of view, I got a different point of view. I have uh, empathy and compassion for what he's doing and, and I think that's a much better place to be instead of this thing that, you know, him versus me. I don't think that's productive. Just very briefly explain, and I know it's hard to do it briefly, and I accept your point that that love actually thing isn't just rhetorical. I, I, I'm, I stand corrected. Um, What's the practical route between here and your victory in uh, 2029, 28, 29? I mean, giving India a, and it's not just me, it's millions of people, young people, giving India a vision that gives them hope. That's it. And putting in front of the people of India a set of ideas that makes them believe in the future. And I, not to be arrogant, but I have spent more time than most walking my country. India is struggling to imagine the future. You know, when you, when you struggle to imagine a future, you start discussing the past. What is Hindutva's or, or Mr. Modi's or RSS's proposal? The proposal is, let's not discuss the future. Let's talk about the past. And that's very dangerous for a country like India, the scale of India. And it's also boring. boring. <laughs>